Hey everybody, it's Tom here. Welcome back to the channel. It is uh, January 1st, 2020, so it is New Year's Day. I want to wish everybody a happy new year and hopefully a prosperous new decade. <laughs> so uh, what I got going on is I've been working on my high steer forklift and I was going to throw a few video clips in a uh, upcoming mail call, but since we got so much going on, I figured I'd do is uh, you know, make a separate video for you guys, and um, that way in the title search, if somebody has an old uh, heister forklift and they've run into some of the issues I've run into, then they can uh, obviously find the video easy, and hopefully some of this information will uh, help them out. So uh, I guess we'll start with the basics here. And uh, show you some of the trials and tribulations I had to go through. So, uh, unfortunately, the data plate was removed off of this forklift when I bought it. The only other uh, information I could find was this sticker here, which has been conveniently painted over. So, obviously, that didn't help any. So, the only thing left you got to work with is this serial number here and this last letter here B designates the year that it was manufactured so that helps you a little bit and then of course going off a couple other things one is the rear design changed and uh, uh, throughout the years and obviously the wheelbase so looking on eBay looking on uh, Google images and doing some auction sites i finally figured it out this was um an h 50h i ordered these stickers and put them on there and the 50 designates that this is a uh, 5000 capacity lift and i was also fortunate enough to score a manual off of ebay an older manual so this covers all these models here but uh Going back to the letter at the end of the serial number. So what Heister did starting in 1957, first one made and the going out through the years, they put a letter to designate the year. They did not use I, O, and Q. So when I was looking at this forklift, I brought my iPad and I looked it up. And so the B, I thought this was a 2004 model, but er, no, actually, this is a 1981 model. It's actually older. So hopefully you guys can see this pretty good. You can find it on the internet. Sometimes uh, you have to search a little harder. It doesn't always like, pop up. So if you're trying to figure out the year of your manufacturer, this will help you out. This is how they uh, lettered it to the corresponding year. Not sure how well this is going to show up, but uh, let me try it. So looking in the book, it's got some specs here, or should I say dimensions, that will help you determine what size forklift you got. So over here you got H30, 40, 50, and 60, and they give you some dimensions. So then you come over here, and this is uh, where you can pull your dimensions off of. That's what helped for me to figure out what I had because um, coming over, let's see, which one did I use? Do, 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 do. And of course the wind wants to blow here. <laughs> so what I used is C and I came out with uh, 98 and a half inches or something very close to it. And what that did is measuring C, so from the very back all the way up to uh, basically the front of uh, where your fork connects, I guess, to the carriage, if that's what you want to call it. So that's how I figured it out. And you can also do wheelbase. But using C, there was enough variation in the measurements, which helped me to determine it's a 5,000 pound lift. So I'll put my email there. So if uh, you know you guys want to uh try to figure it out and you can't get a manual you can send me an email and i can you know send you these dimensions or if any other clues that you need i'll be glad to help you out 
Well, just out here in the barn getting a little uh, work done on the forklift. So, uh, had a good friend Sage come over and give me a hand. Or I should say I gave him a hand. And we got the mast cylinder out. I think I mentioned it when I uh, debuted the purchase of this thing. But in case I didn't, <laughs> hear that squeaky? He wants to play ball again. <laughs> hey, chaos. But anyway, so the... Uh, the seal was leaking bad on the uh, cylinder once it got to the second stage. So I figured we'd go ahead and get this thing out and get it uh, repaired while waiting on the shop build. And also Santa was nice enough to uh, get me a new seat for the forklift. Because this one here is in pretty good shape. Let me pull it down. Hang on. Oh, I'm trying to do it with one hand. But see, you slide in and out this way. So... This edge here and this part was taking a beating. I put some uh, black old duct tape on it to try to make it last, but you can see it's already starting to roll and come off. So otherwise the seat's not too bad. What we'll do is we'll save the seat. And we can use it in the shop, you know, make some legs and make it a seat to sit at the welding table or wherever. But a uh, little bit of mail call action. So I'm gonna get the seat in here. I'm not gonna film that. That's just simple unbolt and bolt, hopefully. And I got to uh, clean all the old hydraulic fluid out, flush the system, or at least get all the old stuff out the best I can. Get a new uh, filter, because you can see this is the old stuff. And it's not supposed to look like, you know, Gatorade pee. That's for sure. So <laughs> there's no telling how old or when it's been changed or what contaminants are in it. So. This is uh, the project for the day. We'll catch you guys. Well, the cylinder's out getting rebuilt. I figure I'd go ahead and uh, get all the old hydraulic fluid out, get a new filter in, and put some fresh stuff in. Because as you remember, it shouldn't look like that. That's disgusting. <laughs> so here's the filter. Looking at the manual, apparently it's like a two-piece unit. It's uh, got a metal screen. And you clean the middle screen and inside apparently there is a uh, paper filter and then you replace the paper filter. So hopefully that filter on the inside has got a part number on it. That would help me out greatly. So hopefully you can see that pretty big tank. Don't know exactly how much it holds. I guess I could pull the measurements and figure out the volume that way mathematically. And of course, you know, everything I got is packed up. So... <laughs> I have no idea where my oil pump is, so I'm going to have to manually, you know, put a can in there and fill it up and pour it out and continue on about a uh, hundred times to try to get to the bottom of it. But, oh well, it's a nice day and uh figure I'll take advantage of it. Well, got the uh, filter assembly apart. As you can see, she is pretty nasty and disgusting. So... Yeah, it definitely needed cleaning. It hadn't had any maintenance in a long time. So, that's good. That's the metal filter that you just uh, clean out. And then this has got a paper filter wrapped around it. So, and this seal was all munched. It wasn't sitting on it good. So, I don't know if that affected the, uh, the pressure coming through it or not. But whoever put it back together didn't get it right. <laughs> Go figure. I know a couple of uh, YouTubers have featured this handy O-ring gauge on their channels, but I figured out I'll feature it also. So this big O-ring here came off of a, oh, this part right here. She sat down there. Well, hard to do this with one hand, but you get the idea. So I had to figure out what this is because obviously it's roached. And since I am cleaning all that stuff, getting a new filter and all that, I wanted to use a new O-ring. So I picked up this handy gauge a while back. And uh, let me show you how it works. Okay, let me try this. Had to kind of position you over here. So first off, what you do is you need to figure out the diameter of the O-ring. And they give you these slots up here. So you start sticking them in the slots to figure out which one you get. And this one fits good here. Hopefully you guys can see that. So you've got two different selections. 
you go in between these two here if it's a short one and if obviously it's a long one then you would come from here and you connect it to here for a long o-ring so you put her on here and you pull her out and you get her snug kind of taut and since we're using this one this one so you read this number here and uh pulling her taut hopefully you can see that so she's a 332 so that's how you determine your o-ring pretty cool device i picked it off of uh, ebay for like 25 bucks so o-ring gauge good uh, tool to add to your arsenal well as you can see it's a nice ugly day rainy overcast of course old chaos wants to play always <laughs> so here we go ahead and get a little work done on the forklift today so i picked up this uh extractor pump so i'm going to use that to like get the last little bit out of the bottom of the tank no need to film that that's pretty easy and once we get that emptied and wiped out and cleaned up then i think um i'll start working on getting this stuff back together still haven't got my filter got a tracking number finally but we can go ahead and make the gasket I picked up uh you know your basic gasket making kit because i figured it'd be next to impossible to try to get an old gasket for that so we'll make one out of that this is the original cork one but what i do find interesting is the uh, you see those little uh round headed screws there so they bolt the um two together and then then that whole unit bolts to the uh to the tank so i'm surprised that it seals well enough with those heads you, you would think it would countersink it or something so it would be flat because really it sticks up and uh basically bottoms out metal to metal so i'm not sure i've got some uh, high tack we can put on there too just to make sure because i don't want it sucking any air into the system so we'll see so let me get that uh get that going and cleaned up and i'll bring you guys back so i got the tank cleaned out you can see there's a baffle right there so can't get any more clean on that side it's the best we can do and i've got all these parts cleaned and i just got them sitting here inside the barn they can hang out not get uh dirty from the elements because i'm not sure when the next time we're going to be able to uh, get all this stuff back together only on a, <laughs> a nice warm day so this is the uh top or i only say the cap and it sits down um on top of the tank and of course that uh the filter mechanism bolts to the bottom but as you can see we have a machined groove in here so i started looking and this is the gasket that goes to it and it looks like it's got a a plastic gasket of some sort sitting on this cork one surprised i didn't use an o-ring so what i think i'm going to do because this is obviously old and hard is see if i can find an o-ring in this diameter and this thickness and then we'll uh use the gasket material i got and we'll make two new gaskets well the mailman just stopped by got my parts in so this filter here there's a part number 75669 that's the original heister this crosses over this is napa's 1168 hydraulic filter so a little bit different design but looks to be the same sweet that'll work it's cheaper to buy this go that route so if you guys need it there it is also got my o-ring in so um 
we can almost put this thing together. I just got to order that other O-ring that I just discovered on that. Uh, it goes here. Oh, it's starting to rain on me. It goes uh, in here. I guess you'd call this the oh the cap. You know that runs in there on that uh, groove that they machined. So I'll hit McMaster car up for that. But uh, so there's the replacement. And this thing goes on top of there, seals it up. Cool. All righty, starting to come together. So just wrapping up making the gaskets. So there's one. Got the other one. Still got to punch the holes. But uh, I want to say hey, thanks to Santa. I got me this uh, punch kit for Christmas. Of course, I open it up and look at them, man. Half of them are all rusty, so I'll have to clean them up and get some coating on them so they don't rust. But you know how they work is you get your gasket situated, you find the right size hole. And boink, you know, you punch and you get nice, uh, nice through holes. So gaskets are done. Yay. So a little bit of good news. Um, my buddy Sage contacted me and told me he was able to uh, break the cylinder down, get into it and see what was going on. And as you can see, obviously the uh, seals are roached. So and looking at the uh the notches for a spanner he uh thought that probably somebody's been in this before so the chrome looked really good so that is uh, definitely <laughs> a, a good thing don't have to worry about possibly re-chroming the rods so tickled about that so as you can see just uh crumbled so we are going to uh, put fresh seals in it, and um, that'll be pretty much it. We'll get it together, and we'll be able to go ahead and um, start putting the, you know, the mast back in and start uh, assembling this thing. So I just thought I'd give you guys an update on the mast.